Let's talk again about enhancements for the process engine and therefore a very specific flag we all know as the master SQL server flag. Master SQL server flag is a flag that could be assigned to a job service and as we all know there is only the capability to have one master SQL server. The master SQL server flag is assigned to the job service which normally executes all, all handle object jobs typically inserted by the dbq processor into the job queue. This flag is well known as well on the process developer side because a lot of process developers decide to assign that flag as well as executing server to a process step. And the reason for that is it is easy to identify which server service will then do the job. In the past years, uh, more and more, uh, that was a problem on the performance side. And the reason for was that the number of jobs for that master SQL server, that means for that job service behind the master SQL server flag, was increasing. And with that, it becomes more and more a bottleneck. To solve that, our development decided to do two things. First of all, it created a new server flag, which is named SQL Processing Enabled. And SQL Processing Enabled, it's now the flag that will be assigned to all of these job services have to work on SQL jobs. And all of these handle object jobs, for example, are now in the meantime inserted into the job queue for SQL Processing Enabled and not for Master SQL Server anymore. The big improvement here is that it is possible to have more than one job service with the flag SQL Processing Enabled. And if there is more than one service, uh, the system starts in a round robin way just to assign these handle object jobs or these SQL jobs to the different services flagged with that specific flag. With that, uh, any bottleneck it's just solved and the complete processing of SQL jobs gets speeded up by scaling job services having that specific flag. However nice this is, there's just one problem and this problem appears to a specific type of jobs typically could not be load balanced. And a very common example of that are the outer update jobs. Outer update jobs could not be load balanced. They have to be done serial. They have to be done from one single specific job server. And because of that, the good old master SQL server flag exists as well. Our development decided just to rename the master SQL server flag. It is now named update server. And with that, we have now two flags. One flag, it's the update server flag. It is a single flag, could only be assigned to one job service. All jobs will run in serial using that flag. And the other is the SQL processing enabled flag, which is assigned to much more jobs. And this is something that could be load balanced. Some notes uh, to the upgrade from one version to the other. During the upgrade process in one identity manager, the upgrade turns all jobs flagged with the master SQL server flag just to the SQL process enabled flag beside the outer update and one or two others. But this happens only for standard processes. For all custom processes, uh, the good old flag master SQL server will remain. Uh, in this case, uh, it is only renamed to update server. That means all custom SQL jobs, all custom handle object jobs are assigned to the update server. Knowing that you do now have two choices. One choice is just to assign your custom SQL jobs to the update server flag. This is if you need serial processing. The second thing is you can assign them to the SQL Server Processing Enabled flag and then your SQL jobs will be load balanced as well. Whatever you do there, it is a little bit manually work to do. If you don't do this manual work, then your SQL jobs will be serial processed. Another cool and not really easy to show feature is that we have now a dynamic priority for process steps could be set during the generation. What is meant there, as you can remember, on each process step, you can just configure a priority. Standard priority was three all the time. More than three means the job gets executed earlier. Less than three means it gets executed later always depending on the mass of other jobs of the same type in the job queue. And in the meantime, it is possible as well with the help of priority definition, which is a new field, just 
to insert some lines of code so that depending on something you can increase or decrease the priority of these jobs during execution. For example, if there's an update job for an Active Directory account and if a password gets set, you can check that during the generation. It is a standard process on update and during the update, the property user password in Active Directory is modified and depending on that, the priority will be set higher than the priority that will be the standard priority, which will be three, for example. You can see that on the screen here, it's easy to use and pretty helpful just to decrease the number of processes we have, because with that, you don't need for the password update, for example, a new process only because you need a higher priority. Some more enhancements for the process engine. Uh, first of all, a new job code for retries. Remember, uh, if a job was going into a retry, this was always on the basis of a first failure in the first attempt of the job. And that failure was as well notified in the job log as an error. That means a, re a red error message. And then uh, one or two tries later, it was going through in green. That means uh, with success and everything was good. But it was a little bit hard always to see these red error messages and to figure out that it was only because of a failed retry instead of uh, a global and general failure. Now the system knows about that. It is as well able uh, to see that. We used that first time for the synchronization jobs. And with the help of that, you will not have these red error messages anymore. Another very interesting feature is that out parameter are now part of the history. In the very past, out parameters was created during the process execution, but they was nowhere locked because all the parameters are normally locked during the generation of processes, not of the execution. Now these out parameters will be part of the process history and so you can see out parameter values as well. In version 7, we started to make standard processes a little bit customizable. Yeah, remember, we have to copy a process if you want to have it fully customizable, but some of the properties was now customizable. And the reason for that was the new behavior to store changes in the One Identity Manager with version 7. Please look into the 7 bits if you are interested. The interesting thing here is that this was not a little bit expanded in a way of that on the process you can now define as well other events. That means you can add events to standard processes. This could help, especially the people only wants to add an event. Maybe the process was defined for insert and now you want to run it on update as well and then you can now add the update event. In the past it was necessary to copy the process, now it is without copying. A new feature in the job queue monitoring is as well part of the story. A lot of people will be happy about it. Remember, the job queue in job queue info don't allow auto refresh the complete job queue. That makes perfectly sense, especially if we talk about hundreds of thousands of jobs in the job queue. And just to select the job queue and to ask everything new from the job queue will always be a big data feed from the database to the front end. Because of that, it was always necessary that people press F5 or do a refresh of the job queue to get something new. This leads to another problem, especially looking at people with very nervous fingers always pressing F5 or 10 times 5 seconds. Whatever. In the very past, we had the feature just to monitor one complete process by clicking into the process and to say monitor process. And with that, it was possible at the end to see the changes there. With version 8 of the Identity Manager and Job Queue Info version 8, it is now possible to say, let's monitor a complete queue. That means you select a specific job, which is defined for a specific queue, and then you say, monitor queue. And what happens there is that all jobs made by that queue will be automatically refreshed. Cool feature. We will love it, I'm sure.